It is very important to get your tracks to sound as loud as other competitive tracks. If your track's not sounding loud enough, then um, your tracks will not sound as good. There is a psychoacoustical phenomenon where humans perceive loud music as better than music that is less loud. So uh, you need to be competitive with your um, loudness in your mix. There used to be um, sort of a war, it's called the loudness war, where uh, different uh, producers and uh, mastering engineers would try to um, make their own tracks louder than all everybody else's track. And that way they actually made more money when they were playing that track on the radio because uh, suddenly a louder track comes in and everybody thinks it's re this track's really good. Uh, just because it's louder and, and that's actually a little bit how it works. This has become managed now by uh, streaming services for example like Spotify and YouTube and iTunes and all these. They don't want tracks to be of different kind of volumes. Um, they want the listeners to be able to play a country track at a certain level on their speaker system and then suddenly switch over to a drum and bass track and be able to remain at the same volume on their on their system so the way that they do that is that they um, sort of equalize the volume or the, the perceived loudness of all tracks that you upload to to spotify for example so uh, <clears throat> i found a web page that illustrates this here you see the different streaming services and there's um uh, in most doors you measure loudness using RMS um, level and uh, here we measure it with LUFS. It's slightly different, it's slightly more accurate uh, to measure it like uh, with LUFS. And uh, that's what I used. I use both methods uh, depending on what's on hand. And uh, here you can see that a track on uh, Apple Music, uh, then you have minus 16 LUFS. And, um, Spotify is minus 14. <clears throat> so let's say that you mix your track to a loudness of minus 16. So it's peaking somewhere at minus 16. Then it might look something like this. So you can see that we haven't actually killed the music by squashing it too much with a the limiter. There's still dynamics, there are still uh, transients in the music, and you can see that in the waveform here. And now we we'll take a look at a um, commercially mixed track um, um, at minus 8 LUFS and you can see that the waveform is a lot um, larger overall and that has to do with the limiting that's going on in order to 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 make this uh, track that loud. So if you take this loud track and you put it into Spotify they're going to lower the volume of that uh, to minus 14. So all the hard work that went into making it minus eight actually goes out the window and uh, you know your track's not uh, gonna be as loud as you mixed it, it's going to be uh, minus 16. Now, uh, I, I'm not quite sure what happens with a really badly mixed track that's below. I think that gets actually, they try to um, push that to the same level uh, and the track might not respond well to that um, or maybe it's just playing lower volume, I don't know. But uh, let's take a look at a commercially mixed track. This is Ellie Golding and um, her tracks, if you take them off the CD, they're going to be like minus eight LUFS. And uh, uh, we can check the loudness of this. I've actually ripped this one from Spotify so you can see uh, on this meter here, you can see the LUFS. And, and these are meters are available from Logic uh, out of the box. So let's take a look at what the loudness of this track looks like now. And you can see it stabilizes around minus 12. So actually Spotify is uh, giving us a bit uh, louder track here. And um, how do you get your track to be this loud? There's two tricks really and uh, of course you have to put a limiter on your track and uh, if your track is not mixed well enough then the limiter is just going to squash the life out of the track. So the, the main thing to get the loudness is to roll off the bass frequencies. If you have too much, a lot of the, a lot of the um, energy in the music comes from the bass part and if you look at Ellie's track here you can see that they've rolled off pretty much uh, all the bass uh, from 30 and down. <laughs> 
And you can do this on your own mixes. You can um, roll off on the mastering and um, and get rid of some of that um, unused um, bass. For example, below 20 hertz, there's pretty much no speakers that's going to be able to reproduce um, those frequencies. You can just roll them off and get some headroom from that. Um, or even better, you can do all that while you're mixing, so you don't do, do it in the mastering stage. And uh, the second trick is to ha actually have quite a lot of mid-range. So the mid-range is the most important part in uh, uh, in getting loud mix, a, a mix that is perceived as loud. So if we look at the, the mid-range here, most commercial mixes has a slope that goes from the bass all the way down pretty much straight with some bumps in the middle. And Ellie has a bump here in around 2k. So um, uh, this is sort of an art form to get your bass rolled off and really a lot of mid-range without so um, the mix sounding tinny or without uh, the, the mid-range making it harsh to your ears. You have to have a lot of mid-range but sort of a soft mid-range and um, that can only come from really good mixing. So I'm going to switch now to uh, one of my own tracks and um, we'll take a look at what that could look like. So here we are in um, my own project and this is sort of a um, cinematic cue that I've made. And um, let, put up, let me put up the multimeter so you can see the EQing going on here. This is not uh, mixed at all like Ellie's track. Um, there's a lot more bass to it and um, it's more meant for the cinema than um, um, the um, than radio. Uh, so I know that there will be speaker systems that will be able to handle all this extra bass that I have. And I, I mixed this very close to 8. It's actually going over 8 uh, a couple of times. But most of the track is very drony and mellow in the beginning. I'm not going to play the entire track. You can, you can check it out on my SoundCloud account if you want. I'll put the link downstairs. And um, uh, so I'm, I'm having some portions of the music which, which is soft. And then I'm using the minus eight uh, luffs when it's uh, really hitting uh, the edge of things here, the climax. So let's take a look and you can, um, you can see the luffs here. And you can see the RMS here. I'm using um, Isotope 7 uh, as a mastering plugin here. And um, I'll actually leave that one up. So you can see the compressor, the limiter working uh, much harder on these uh, really hard portions of the music. And you can see I'm touching um, or even going slightly over minus um, eight luffs here. And um, you might ask why I mixed uh, this track so loud. And uh, I think it serves a very good purpose to, it's a very good exercise to do that because if you can't get your mix up to minus eight uh, to Ellie's level, then you might not have as good a mix as you think you have. So um, what I need to do if I can't if I didn't, can't get my mix to minus eight, I'm pretty sure that it will sound bad in in uh, other systems. So um, uh, one of the main things that uh, enables me to to get it up to minus eight is that I make sure that there's no overlapping frequencies between different instruments in the bass region. So if I have, for example, an instrument that's sitting at its main 
um, frequency at 150 then I will roll off 150 on uh, on some other instruments that's also occupying that pre- that frequency and I will have to decide which instrument should occupy the 150 um, that way I can sort of clean out the bass and um, that will enable me to be more aggressive with the limiter later on so um, that's why I always try to make uh, my mixes loud and I can always go back it's easier to go back from from minus 8 I can I can drop it down to minus 16 if I want to but if I can't get it up to minus 16 then you know I have some I have a serious issue with my mix so um, the better you mix the louder you can go so um, if I can go really loud I know my mix is pretty good so that's just um, one way of thinking about it that's it for now thank you bye <laughs>